Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeff Malinoff. Let's just get right into it. So, with the Chiefs signing the Honey Badger to a $42 million contract and have a safety, they cut ties with Eric Berry. The uh, five-time Pro Bowler is now on the market, and I think he's going to get picked up really soon. He's still, a, I he's injury prone. Absolutely, he was kind of riddled with injuries last season. He's a question mark, but I don't know why it wouldn't be such the worst idea to have a one year prove it deal with him. Honestly, I see that as a potential possibility. And um, with that being said, are the Chiefs better with the Honey Badger than Eric Berry? Because, honestly, it was the defensive scheme that kind of cost them. It wasn't just a particular player or a particular uh, the defense, the team, the talent the defense has on the field. They had Eric Berry go one-on-one with Gronkowski in the AFC Championship game multiple times, and it never worked. Gronk kept getting the ball. Uh, Tom Brady kept saying, oh, look, there is Gronk out uh, playing a guy he outsizes. By like a good foot, it looks like, and he he also out. He's also more strong. He's stronger than he is. He could probably out. He he probably can catch it outside of that. All that um, outside of all the um, outs. Okay, outside of the reach of Eric Berry, it just was a bad. It was just a bad mismatch, which led to uh. Uh, Eric Berry unable to stop Gronkowski in the AFC Championship game, which led to the Patriots winning and let him go into the Super Bowl and winning a 6-1. So, um, with that being said, is it his fault about his poor play against the Patriots or was it the poor defensive scheme he was in? I would honestly put it on the scheme rather than the player itself, but again, I could be totally wrong in that in that circumstance. And, you know, it just feels like to me that there's more potential in Eric Berry. There's still more left on the tank for Eric Berry than most people realize. And I think whoever picks him up, he could still be a quality starter and he could still get the job done for the the team he gets signed to. I mean, a one-year proven deal may be a two-year deal, but I, I wouldn't go past a four-year deal, obviously. Uh, I wouldn't go uh, – I would say maybe three uh, I think three is a uh, a safe bet in that circumstance. So um, I don't know. It just it's just it's a tough subject, obviously, to go on. Not tough subject's a strong word, but just it's a tough thing to really utilize and say what's his main strengths. Is he still is he still uh, can he stay healthy throughout the season as well? I think that's also a big factor in this. So with that being said. I think he can be still a big factor. I think he still can be a big playmaker for a team, can boost up a defense. Like, he can't make it any worse, a defense, right? I mean, he's not that he's not that type of player. He's the type of player that will make him better one way or another. Either his, like, just motivational skills or on his on-the-field skills. I think it just can work either way or both ways. Who knows? But to me, I just feel more along the lines of um, how... Uh, how... Eric Berry kind of got low, kind of got, um, kind of swept under the swept 
hit the rug uh, snatched from underneath him on this whole thing. I thought Eric Berry was going to be a chief for life, but it doesn't look like to be that way. I mean, I don't think he's going to retire, but I am assuming he's going to get signed by another team. And with that being said, what team is he going to go to? Obviously, a team with needed uh, with in need of a lot of uh, help on defense, of course. So, I mean, maybe in a team that's in a win now state, I would assume. It's really hard to tell where he uh, will end up going if he even goes anywhere because he might he might just like uh, call it a career, you know, and retire because he's he's been in the league for that long. So it's really hard to say uh, how everything's really uh, gonna play out with uh, with the um, Eric Berry and his future um, in the NFL. I mean, I guess maybe the AAF if he doesn't find anyone, but I doubt it'll go down that low. And I just think that uh, Matthew is or uh, Matthew is uh, the honey badger is a better is a is younger and is in his prime and less injury prone, I believe. And I think it'd just be a best bet if he st- if uh, they move on from Eric Berry. But I think other teams should really look at Eric Berry and really take advantage of the fact that he's a free agent and assign him. I really do. I think he'd be a great addition to any team. I still think he has what it takes to do well in this in the NFL. Despite all the injuries and despite the cancer uh, he overcame, fortunately, it's just one of those things where it's like you, you got to give this guy another opportunity. He has the talent to be... Uh, better than he is right now that's how that's how i truly feel at least so with that being said at least i think in where eric berry he will be signed by let's say sunday i will say he'll be signed by sunday and i'm standing by that standing by it i really am and the bottom line is for this particular uh cut uh, it's probably one of the most surprising cuts of the year. Like, I knew they signed the free safety Honey Badger, and I was like, okay, they can I just, I guess Eric Perry just could be the backup over there or split time with him. But no, they just outright cut him. So, you know what What a team that should have outright cut him is the, uh, the Giants and Eli Manning, but they apparently have kept him in the loop. Um, he's Apparently, they planned all this out, and... Um, He's going to still be a, uh, their starting quarterback. But that's not the biggest news. Well, the thing that sucks really like turning the league upside down to me is the fact that the Browns are a Super Bowl contender. Everyone's thinking the Patriots are not going to go back to the Super Bowl. The Steelers are not doing good. They look like they are in a, in a, down, in a serious downcline themselves. And, you know, it just... It seems more along the lines of just, uh, it seems more along the lines of just, like, is this, uh, is this the beginning of a new era in the NFL? And I honestly think it is. New teams, uh, form new, te- new teams gaining serious momentum, uh, gaining serious, uh, like, uh, leverage, I guess, if you, maybe, maybe leverage is the wrong word, but just, like, the like the Browns are improving so much that it's impressing everybody, and I mean everybody that watches football. Everyone's impressed that the Browns are have improved so much, getting an all all pro first team all pro wide receiver in Odell Beckham Jr., getting Kareem Hunt, uh, having Nick Chubb as well, Baker Mayfield, uh, Jarvis Landry. That offense looks pretty stacked to me, and thirteen and three is still what I'm considering they're going to be this season. Due to a fairly weakened AFC North, except for the Ravens, who boosted their defense by getting um, Earl Thomas, but yes, lost C.J. Mosley and Terrell Suggs, but they also gained Mark Ingram at the running back position, which may help Lamar Jackson um, and not giving him as many snaps and running the ball as often as he was before. Because let's be honest, Lamar Jackson cannot run the ball 30 times a game. He's going to get hurt big time if that's going to happen. So having a strong bruiser back like Mark Ingram can only benefit the read option that hopefully they will use with the uh, uh, ability of Lamar Jackson and the ability of uh, Mark Ingram. But uh, we'll see what they come up with. I'm thinking that the Ravens will take a wild card spot, but I still see the Browns winning the whole entire division. 
and it's just a fun it's just a weird time to be around you know it's just based off like like when you think of when you think of uh elite teams in the nfl the browns are the last person on your list the jaguars as well uh the Titans are probably pretty low in there also um you put a lot of teams up there as a team coming from the brink of insanity to now a brink of success like the jaguars i know they have now the f six seventh pick in the draft which they i don't think they will need to go for a quarterback anymore like i projected but they could add boost to their already steady and elite defense or help out Nick Foles and get him like a wide receiver or something. I'm not sure, but there's plenty of opportunities and plenty of uh, possibilities for these uh, new ball clubs that are getting more and more talented. I mean, even the Jets got a big linebacker in C.J. Mosley as well as arguably the best running back in the game in Antonio Brown. So I, I really don't know how else to react to this. It just seems so unreal that... All these teams that we really looked at as, uh, what's, the, what's the word below underdogs? I mean, that was them, basically. And then they become a serious uh, contenders in their own respective divisions. Maybe not the Raiders, maybe not the Chiefs, but definitely um, the California teams that have done well. Like, the 49ers have upped their defense as well. And it just seems like all the teams that you expect to do better are getting better, and that's the beauty of this sport, and that's the beauty of this game. And I'm really looking forward to see what else happens in this season. I got my phone on me just in case anything gets signed today. Uh, I'll double check right now, actually, speak of the devil. Uh, and, you know, the unexpected NFL draft, like, we're looking at the Giants as potentially drafting Dwayne Haskins out of Ohio State if Kyler Murray does go number one overall, which seems like that is the inclusion as well, but really don't know what the outcomes are going to be in either, the, in either of those uh, big question marks uh, that they have. But... Regardless, I think it's one of the more long lines of um, just, I guess, I guess patience when it comes down to the off season because you want the off season to start now, but it's not. So you just got to bite your tongue and wait and wait just a little bit longer. But we're gonna take a short break right now. When we come back, I want to I want to uh, talk more about um, Josh Rosen and him potentially being a New York Giant in the future. We'll get right on that when we return. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Football Podcast. We just finished talking about some other stuff that could happen in the world of football as it turns upside down with all these free agency moves. Now, let's get more into discussion about Josh Rosen as he is tied with the New York Football Giants at the moment as there are there have been thoughts of the Cardinals going for Kyler Murray with the first overall pick, but that's I don't, it's so hard to tell because they have Josh Rosen from last year. But... If they do tra uh, trade Josh Rosen, the best possible place and then probably the best offer they're going to get is the New York Giants. And the thing with that is the best place for Josh Rosen is sitting behind a quarterback. Doesn't matter what kind of quarterback, just sitting behind a quarterback and just taking a rest for a season, reading a playbook understanding defensive schemes against those your offense and working from there 
You can get better by observing. You can get better by doing homework. You can get better by so-and-so. You know what I mean? It just feels like you don't need to be on the field as a starter to really improve. You can be off the field to improve in more ways than one. So uh, that's how I see it mainly there. But bottom line for Josh Rosen is he's going to go, if he does, go to a team in New York, the Giants. And he does, and he sits behind Brady. He can improve Brady, excuse me, Eli, and he can improve. I mean, so many great quarterbacks have had short breaks, one season, two seasons, or three, and seriously improve. Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes are the two I think about, and they've been both NFL MVPs. So it's one of those things you're looking at and going, wow, maybe we should look at resting our quarterback and not play him right away as soon as we draft him and put him into the lion's den where he can risk injury, lose a ton of confidence, and all these other things like, wow, this wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be type of scenario where they join uh, and they know what they're getting themselves into. So with that being said, it seemed that uh, Jerry McKinnon was very okay with the process that was going on. I think uh, because he's getting over an ACL tear and Jimmy Garoppolo is getting over an ACL, an ACL tear, as well as Quan Alexander now getting over an ACL tear, they all have something to prove. They all have like this chip on their shoulder, and I think they can all come up um, and with a lot of confidence. And uh, with that being said, if I had to pick between like let's let let's let, let's look at this. If the Giants get Rosen in the next two years, are they a playoff team? No, but if Josh Rosen is sitting out those two years, and then it comes back midway through that, um, midway through that season or the next season. Why can't he be an improved quarterback? Why can't he be a better quarterback? Let's face it, the team he was on in the Arizona Cardinals—they were terrible. Their offensive line was awful. He couldn't get a throw off in time. He had like two or three seconds in the pocket. As soon as he hiked the ball, someone was after him. Like he had to scramble insanely fast. So that's why I'm putting like hesitant when I'm thinking about like um, people saying, oh, uh, he didn't throw the ball very well. And all these other flaws that he had regarding his um, regarding uh, Josh Rosen in his first year as the starting quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. But it's like I feel like you can't blame him for the majority of that stuff due to the fact of like how poor that team was in general. And you can't just put it on the rookie quarterback. You got to put others responsible, and that's kind of maybe that's why the head coach got fired. I'm not sure, but he was held responsible for those actions, for those words, for that horrible record they had, for the first overall pick they have, and now you're in a big question mark of saying like, okay, what do we do now? Type of type of scenario. So with that being said, um, I honestly think Josh Rosen, uh, a call from heaven is him going to the New York Giants um, in a trade. Him being behind Manning at the end of his career. I'm not saying Manning is like this amazing uh, quarterback. I'm saying he's an average quarterback at best and below average at worst. And he's always been in the middle of the pack type of problem. And um, with that being said, if you go to... And if you learn from his mistakes and move on into the... Uh, Giants number one quarterback and you become a leader and you become more of a leader like that in a sense then yes then that could also definitely work when it comes down to it because we all know that Eli Manning has been criticized in the past and it's never been a good criticizing it's always been like his leadership skills or something or his play and Josh Rosen can learn from his criticisms and do something great with that you know what I mean it just seems like more like you can learn from his mistakes rather than learning from like his um, detriments or learning from his accomplishments because he doesn't really have that many accomplishments. He doesn't have, he's only been the pro Bowl four times in his career and he's been in the league since 2004. That is a terrible, like that's not very good at all. The guy that's been playing for that long, you expect like 10 pro bowls or eight to 10 pro bowls. I mean, I'm being nice about the eight part, but Man, four, that's it? Come on, you got to be better than that. you got to be better than that. And that's just my honest opinion when it comes down to it. And uh, if if the Giants do acquire Josh Rosen, 
then Eli's fighting for his job. Maybe not, I don't know, but I have a gut feeling that when it comes down to it, you know, it's thinking about it just now. I just thought about this just now. The the Jets are better than the Gi- uh, Giants right now. Like usually it's like the Jets are the bottom of the New York franchises. But, you know, with the addition of Le'Veon Bell and C.J. Mosley, and I think this, I think they're better than the Giants. And now the Giants are in dire straits because they're going to be the bottom of the team in New York City. And it's so weird. Actually, it's so weird to think about this just now. But is there one good team in New York? I mean, the Brooklyn Nets are decent. The New York Islanders in the NHL are pretty good. But, like, is there, like, oh, that's the best team in that particular sport? I don't think there is. I think they're average or below average at times. And that's truly incredible based off if we're talking about, like, signings and free agencies. The New York destination should be loaded. should be, like, everyone want to play there for the market time. And with that being said, like, people are leaving those teams rather than joining those teams. And that's putting a big dent on every organization involved in New York City. And more importantly, this really affects the Giants. And, you know, Eli Manning doesn't really have anyone to throw to at the moment. He doesn't have really a good running game at the moment. He doesn't have um, a defense that can really hold the team to stop points. He's just kind of in a predicament at the moment. The Giants are in a predicament of being like, like, who knows? They could go 0-16. I mean, that wouldn't, uh, that would surprise me, obviously, but it'd be like, you know, with the talent they have, that makes sense. The third team in NFL history go 0-16? Sure, let's go with that. You know, let's go with, let's go with the chances. Let's roll the dice, shall we? Let's, let's, let's see if, uh, if they're that bad. And, you know, it doesn't, like, even with C.J. Mosley and Le'Veon Bell to the Jets, we don't know if the if that is going to boost their team. They still need it. They still have a rookie or a first-year quarterback. They still have um, kind of trouble with their offensive line. The receiving core could be better. I mean, there's still a lot of holes to fill with the New York Jets. But overall, they both help those teams out. And, honestly, they're not as worse as the New York Giants are. But we are going to take a short break. And when we come back... We will talk about um, every other remaining free agent in the NFL and go into detail on who needs them and who why they need them and other things of that nature. We're going to be right back when we get back to you. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. GSMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Football Podcast. Let's look at the free agents that are available, shall we? Because that's important, and we need to discuss uh, who's available left and who is going to be going where, possibly. So we already have a bunch of guys that are taken. <laughs> sounds like a defense, sounds like a Facebook profile taken. Um, anyways, with uh. The current there's uh there's still um well with the signed players of course the most the guy with the highest signing uh the most money is Trey Flowers to to Detroit with a ninety million dollar five year contract, which is pretty good, insane all things considered. But uh 
like we still have uh, Ezekiel Inzai from Detroit, that defensive end there, who's a huge in the market. New Dominican Sue, who is a free agent after his contract with the Rams expired, he could be a huge boost to someone's defense in defensive line. We do have Clay Matthews actually still available, and Jamie Collins, and Justin Houston, three veteran line outside linebackers that could really get the job done. Uh, I think they're all three out. Yeah, they all three are all outside linebackers. They all could be definite veteran presence in a team's offense and a dangerous force if you're looking at a certain direction. <laughs> so, with that being said, there's also, like, uh, Randall Cobb's available. Josh McCown, he, he's uncertain if he wants to play again. Um, let's see. Let's see if anyone else is a note. Andre, or Brandon Marshall, the linebacker from Detroit, or Denver, excuse me, is available to be picked up. And, you know... Oh, Michael Crabtree, Derek Morgan, you know him, uh, Golden Tate, Teddy Bridgewater is technically still available visiting the Dolphins because he's worried about uh, his head coach, uh, Sean Payne, going to Dallas in 2020, so he's having second thoughts about staying there and signing an extension. Uh, Jared Cook, the tight end for the Oakland Raiders, who's actually pretty successful tight end, is in uh, questions or is in the trade market and is probably going to be asked questions like that as well. And it just it just seemed uh it seemed to me that there are a lot of potential free agent signings left and we were only in a couple days. Of course we're only like what one full day into the into the into the um official season. So that's something to be interested to think about. But also, I just want to say like that there is a huge advantage when it comes down to like, uh, when it comes down to the uh, Cleveland Browns. If we can go back to them having two LSU players who are teammates and roommates now on the same team again, brings in chemistry for Baker Mayfield, which makes that team even better with Nick Chubb in the backfield. And then when Kareem Hunt suspensions up, because they haven't really announced his suspension yet, so we really don't know how long he's going to be gone for. It. Why can't this team go 13-3? Hey, I go go higher. 14 and 2. Let's do it right now. 14 and 2, you know? You know, it's it's not crazy to think about because of how talented the Browns are on defense and on offense. Um and with that being said, uh um you know, thinking about um the free agency and how much it's already changed the NFL draft is pretty insane, all things considered, because of the fact that, like, we really don't know what the mock draft is anymore. Like, it used to be Colin Murray and Nick Bosa going one and two, but who knows what the uh, mock draft is now in the NFL uh, post the first day of us, of um, the first day of, what am I, the word, the first day of free agency in the regular season officially beginning. Because, you will still see it's taking Kyler Murray at number one. And the question to me is, like, shouldn't they be, like, pushing for a wide receiver in free agency or offensive weapons in free agency, not just Terrell Suggs? You know, I just feel like there's so many more options for them to go after certain key players on the offensive side that could really boost their team up. If they're going to go after with another rookie quarterback and maybe their franchise quarterback in, um, in, uh, what's his face? In Kyler Murray. What's his face? Wait, uh, don't you hate that when you go like you can't? You said there's you said their name multiple times and just can't remember it to save your life. And you go, what's his name? Like out of frustration. I always think it's pretty funny. Uh, but regardless, let's take a look at the wide receivers that are actually available in free agency and see what the um, Cardinals can do if they're going to draft Kyler Murray of how they can help him out in the long run. So let's check this out right now, right here. Thanks again to Sports uh, Spot Track for uh, giving me all the information I need. So, for available and in the wide receiver department, we have, we still have Demi Demarius Thomas, who did tear his Achilles, so he's probably not going to be a pickup. Randall Cobb is a possible pickup for the Cardinals to take advantage of that situation. I have another, uh, him and Larry Fitzgerald, not in their primes, but still veteran presences for Kyler Murray to throw to, which might be good. Pierre Garçon, Michael Crabtree, Golden Tate, Ryan Grant, Jermaine Curse. Uh, Kevin White and Mike Wallace are two guys I like. Uh, actually, uh, it just seems that there's a lot of um, wow, there's a lot of wide receivers available in this free agent market. A lot. Holy moly, guacamole. Okay. Um, 
You just keep scrolling down. And it just keeps going. Just it doesn't stop. It, it refuses to stop, I tell you. And, uh, yeah, it's just a weird instant. And, but with, uh, if I had to pick one of these free agents I see available in the wider tier market to really boost the Cardinals receiving core and help out their future quarterback in Kyler Murray, if that's where they're going for, you know, you already have a better presence in Larry Fitzgerald and you can get like a Jermaine Curtis or a Ryan Grant or a Kevin White or a, or a, a Cody Latimer or something like that where he doesn't need to be a barn burner, but he just needs to be a contributor. And that might be the contributors you need to really complement both Larry Fitzgerald and Kyler Murray. And also in the backfield, your running game is a big question mark as well. So let's take a look at the available running backs in the dra in the uh, free agent market and see who they can pick up. Because I know they still have David Johnson, but I don't remember the last time he's played even a half a season. Uh, so technically, Marshall Lynch, Isaiah Crowell, Powell. So two of the Jets running backs, Jonathan Stewart, Corey Grant, Gary Berlant, Spencer Ware are all available in the... Uh, in the draft, so that's like pretty exciting. All things considered, because I had them on my fantasy teams one time. Some of these guys, and I, I they can go back and forth. Spencer Ware is also available. Legarrette Blunt's also available. Doug Barton's also available. Dennis Sproles is also available. If the Cardinals can get a decent running back and a decent wide receiver, I think they could they could make some noise. I really do. If they draft Kyler Murray, if they don't, then keep Josh Rosen. That might still be in the air. It's really unknown at this time. What the differences are in both of them, but I think Kyler Murray just has more talent than Jared Goff. But again, um, it's not up to me to decide this. So, yeah. Oh, so with that being said, if I had to pick up a, a running back to take right now to help me boost my team, I might have to go with Spencer Ware. I think I think Spencer Ware is one of the most underrated running backs in the league. I know he was behind Kareem Hunt and. Cream Hunt just stole the show, all the all that. But he did a very lady visit, decent job. He's a two way player. He can catch the ball and run the ball. Why not go for a guy like that? But that's just my personal opinion. But we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about the defensive availability in the NFL draft. We'll be right back right after this. Don't go away. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Football Podcast. We're finishing up the day here. It's the final countdown. Do, 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 do. I can say this now because Mark's not here and he hated it. So, do, 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 at least it's a good song. I like. I've always liked the song. So, um, regardless of that, moving on to, um, like I said, the defensive players are still available in the in the free agent market that can really boost some teams' momentum and boost their, uh, maybe not momentum, but boost their um, just their team in general. I guess. Yeah, that makes more sense. And with that being said, let's. Uh, Let's take a look at uh, the uh, defensive free agents that are available. We already know the main ones that got signed. They're all like huge, uh, uh, huge uh, contracts, and you can't really do anything about that. So going to the defensive side for who's available. 
We do have in Zeke Lanzai, the Detroit defensive end, who's going to be a huge boost. But uh, one of the guys I wanted to talk about, because I think I talked about most of you guys already, but one of the guys I really wanted to talk about who I like is uh, he's pretty underrated, but he's also, um, I mean, he is up there in age, so if you need a um, a presence, I guess you can say, um, then mm, maybe not him. I was thinking Tremaine Brock, but maybe not. Um, it's so hard to decide based on these other running backs. There's really are, uh, defensive players. I mean, there's also uh, Glover Quinn from Detroit. Darian Stewart from New Jersey, Zach Brown from Inside Niagara. So, honestly, yes, you your your team. A lot of teams need those boosts because man, there were a lot of unhealthy teams last year, and they really need to get back into the square of things where they could really improve and where they could really, um, not get hurt. I guess is the fair question. But of course, football is a place where you're going to get hurt. There's a good chance you'll get hurt because of how impressive. The defense is, and they're in professional. They've been training this for a while. And, you know. and uh, with that being said, um, about 13, hour ago, 13 hours ago, there was an introductory press conference for Antonio Brown holding up his Raiders jersey. It looks weird. Like, it's black, which is, nor- like, I get because it was black and or- yellow before. Now it's black and silver, which seems just off to me that he signed with them. And he actually did surprise Carson Wentz, or not Carson Wentz, excuse me, Derek Carr as well in his home. And Derek, Derek Carr looks so confused because he's in sweatpants and a jacket. And he goes, what are you doing here, man? Like, and then and, uh, Antonio Brown's all dressed in a nice suit. He's like, I gave him a surprise my boy here. And he's like, right, what's going on? It's like it's like in the office where um, Michael and uh, the guy that played uh, by Will Ferrell, um, I forget what his name is, um, but he, uh, uh, Mike from the office hands people invitations to the Dundies and he gets, you're invited to the Dundies. And that's just how I see um, Antonio Brown holding his jersey. It just doesn't fit right, but it's like made. For, it's almost like it's made for somebody else. That's how I kind of. That's how I kind of took it. It's a very interesting situation to be sure for. Uh, that's the. That's the. That's the. Uh, that's the bottom line there. I think it's just for any team. I think it's for any player, especially just when they go to a new team, they have a new jersey and everything. Usually, it's the same number, of course. But I don't know with a guy like Antonio Brown, with a guy like a franchise player. And as well as, like, when Odo Beckham Jr. holds up his Browns jersey, it's going to be weird. It's going to be, like, unusual. It's going to be like, I'm not used to this. Like, it's <laughs> I'm going to make another reference again. There's a Family Guy episode where uh, Peter makes a, um, Peter makes a, um, a, all, a guy's club, like, made out of his house. He put a big chunk of his house and made into, like, a guy's club kind of shed. And it's Stewie's room, and Stewie goes, well, "Look, something's wrong with the house. I don't like change." And I'm like, "Oh, that's that's me in a nutshell. Like it's perfect. Like, it's like I, I'm fine with change. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just like I don't like change. Like it's like I like that tone of voice." He goes, "Like I don't like this. It just that's kind of how it feels. Like I don't like change, and this is too much change. And man, the Steelers are just looking at the Steelers fans are looking at both the Jets." And the and the Steelers and just like in disgust of just how they stole two of the best players in the uh, on their team, arguably. So it's funny how things work out that way, huh? It's funny how things uh, turn out. And uh, but I guess the main question between that is who is uh, the better team now? Is it the Jets, including Le'Veon Bell, or is it the Raiders, including Antonio Brown? That is yet to be determined because it's really hard to tell based on how weak they were last the year before. And I think with the addition of CJ Mosley, the Jets are going a little bit over the top on that one, just uh, out of that out of that like question between them and the Raiders. But I'm not expecting the Raiders not to make the playoffs like 100. percent Like they probably still could, obviously. But I'm not saying more. Along, I'm saying more along the lines of just like you know. Let's not count them out yet, but it's unlikely. That's the Jets, right? That was the Jets last season, and then they kept dropping and dropping and dropping. Uh, same with the Redskins, to be honest with you. And uh, it just goes to show that when it comes down to it, when it comes down to your, um, your like, who got the better deal in the long run, the Jets and the Steelers, 
it seems to me, or the Jets, Steelers, or the uh, Ravens, of course the Steelers get low ball because they just traded a th- what, th- fifth and third and a fifth for Antonio Brown, and that's all they got out of the two guys basically because the other guy, Le'Veon Bell, was a free agent, and they couldn't, they didn't franchise tag him, so he could have done whatever he wanted. Uh, oh, it's funny how things work out, you know. But overall, if I had to guess those two records, uh, I'm gonna go with um. Let's see. Let's do let's do Jets first. I'm gonna say nine and seven. No playoffs, but with the addition of C.J. Mosley and Le'Veon Bell, I'll see a nine and seven record, winning record, not playoff, not playoff bound, but still a season of optimistic and optimism and going like, hey. We did good this year. Let's see if we can carry it on and do well in the offseason again. And this time win the AFC East away from the evil Patriots, the evil empire, if you will. Uh, gosh, there's a lot of hate for them. Like, uh, that, what they mainly, well, speaking of the Patriots, what they've mainly done is just um, we signed guys. I don't think they've signed one big name particularly. I think they've re-signed a lot of guys. And, of course, if you won the Super Bowl, why would you want to change that kind of factor? So it makes sense in the long run that they only have t- uh, t- one uh, – that they uh, – the Steelers-wise – or, I'm sorry, the Jets-wise will barely miss the playoffs next year and then look into a great setup for the year after. And so with that being said, uh, I th- is there anything else left to talk about? <laughs> I mean, I could look, but – um. Regardless, let's move to the Browns real quick, though, because I have an interesting question. Who has the better trio, the Texans or the Browns? Because I know the Texans have Watson, Hopkins, and Fuller, which is a great trio. But now with the with the Browns having Mayfield, Odell, and La- and uh, uh, Landry, who are uh, college roommates and all that stuff, does that make their chemistry more better for between the two uh, wide receivers, which makes it easier to make plays? If you're Baker Mayfield, and I have to say, I'm going to go with that Brown setup over the Texans setup, not because of the fact they're better. I would say they're pretty equal, all things considered, and I would never complain having uh, one of them. But when it comes down to the, um, like, who's the better trio, who's going to be a more productive trio, I might have to, I think I got to go with the Cleveland Browns. And it's so weird to claim, like to praise these Cleveland Browns team and go like they're so good and this and that, because we've been so used to they're the they've been the league's punching bag for like it feels like decades. It, it probably it has been decades, and we still like and then all of a sudden this off season completely turns the tide. Uh, the new uh, of course like firing uh, Hugh Jackson was also a huge boost to that as well. But regardless, it was like. It was almost like Hugh Jackson was holding them back, and they uh, exploded afterwards. I mean, look, Hugh Jackson just got fired from uh, from Cincinnati, and I think he's still unemployed. Let's check. Let's check if Hugh Jackson's unemployed. We haven't talked about him in a while. It was fun to talk about him as well, and uh, he is unemployed at the moment, and rightfully so because my gosh, who would give him a job after this? I mean, his regular head coaching record is eleven forty four and one. So I mean, I don't think he's going anywhere. Based on coach, based on a coaching uh, job, maybe not. I'm not sure, but regardless, I think that should be our show today. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody, and please tune us in uh, next. Uh, well, t- let's see today's football podcast. So yeah, tune us in tomorrow. We'll have more football podcasts and stuff. I won't be here tomorrow. I am off to Hawaii. I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna be gone for the week. Then I'll be back. But I hope you guys won't miss me too much, and uh, I will be back. So don't you worry. And as always, I'm Jeff Malinoff, and I'll see you not next time, but not next week, the week after. There we go. I'll see you then, guys. Have a have a good day, y'all. Everyone have a good weekend. Have a good next week, and uh, just take care and have a good one. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www. 
gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Oh, 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 o